Hey everybody, it's Henry Steele, and this is the second weekly video for the month of August 2021. In this video, I want to talk to you about the ratios associated with WD GAN's famous angles, the 1x1 angle, the 2x1 angle, the 4x1 angle, and so forth and so on. So let us, or let me rather, bring up the paint program here from Windows, and I'm going to create a let me make this a bit thinner. I'm going to create a square right here. So here is a square. We're going to say this square has a line segment length of one unit. Could be one inch, could be one centimeter, doesn't really matter. So a square, of course, is a two-dimensional shape that has width and height, but it does not have depth because that would make it a cube. So the square right here has four sides and they're all equal lengths. Pretty easy and simple to understand. A one by one angle bisects a square at a 45 degree angle, like this. Creates two triangles, just like that. The triangles are of equal size because this line splits down exactly down the middle right here. Now this line doesn't matter the size of your square or how many units it takes to make your square side length or width length. The ratio of this line's length compared to one of the sides stays the same. It's a constant. And that ratio is the square root of 2. So 2 square root. The square root of 2 is 1.414 uh, to a precision of 3 digits, that is. Now, that means that this line right here is 1.414 times as long as one of the sides right there. So the ratio associated with the 1 by 1 angle is the square root of 2. So what happens if we want to draw a 2 by 1 angle? Well, we can actually figure this out pretty straightforward. Let's draw a second square right here, right on top of our first square. There we go, just like that. Now, if we draw an angle straight through here, we've created a rectangle with these two squares put together. The rectangle has a size, a width of one unit of measurement, and it has a height of two units of measurement. And that gives us, when we bisect this rectangle with a line like this, just like we did with this first line, that gives us a 2 by 1 line. Because it's moving up 2 units in the same amount of time, it moves over in 1 unit. So this line right here has a ratio in relationship to the height of the rectangle of the square root of 5. So let me bring the calculator over here. Square root of 5 is 2.236. All right. So that means that this line is 2.236 units long. So its square root of 5 relationship is with the long side of the rectangle right here. Now to find out what the relationship is with the actual square, we have to divide this number by 2 since the relationship that it's it has has two units. The, the length of the rectangle has two units, so we have to divide this number by two. So the square root of five divided by two equals the ratio for this two by one angle in the square. In other words, this square has a line segment length or a side length of 1.1, I'm sorry, of one. Sorry about that. The two by one line right here has the line segment length of 1.118 times one of the sides right there. So let's say we want to create a three by one angle. If we do that, we just add a third square to our rectangle. Now our rectangle side is a width of one unit and a height of three units. We draw our angle in like this, and now we need to calculate the ratio of this angle in relationship to the height of the rectangle. Question is, how do we do that? Because the square root of 2 and the square root of 5, these are pretty well known in the GAN field, but most people don't realize that you can really easily calculate any of these squares, these angles, I should say, the relationship to the square. 
Um, it's really just we start with the Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared, the width, times b squared, the height. So one unit times one unit is one. And then we have a height of 3, so 3 squared is 9. So we have 9 plus 1 equals 10. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So this line right here is the square root of 10. So we calculate the square root. That means this line for our 3 by 1 angle is 3.162 units long. So we would have to divide this number by 3, divide by 3, and we find that in relationship to the original square right here, that this 3 by 1 angle has a length equal to 1.054 units, since this original square is just 1 unit by 1 unit. So we can, let's go one more, just to get to a 4 by 1 angle right here. All right, there is our fourth square, and we have our fourth angle right here. Now this is, of course, a four by one angle because we've gone up four squares and only over one square. So we would use our Pythagorean theorem again, which is a squared times b squared, or a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So a squared is 1 unit, that's 1 times 1 equals 1, and then 4 times 4 is 16. So that means this 4 by 1 angle is the square root of 17 in relationship to the height of this rectangle. So we'd have to divide this number by 4, since we're using 4 units right there. And that means that this angle right here has a ratio when compared to the square, the original square, of 1.0307 and so forth. So the length of the 4 by 1 angle is just slightly over one of the side lengths right there. So that's how we can pretty simply determine the ratios associated with these angles for the square. Now one thing I want to point out to you before I end this weekly video is that these numbers these square root numbers that are associated with these angles are related in a very specific way. Notice that our first, our one by one angle, has a square root of two. This angle right here has a square root of five, this one has a square root of 10, and then this one has a square root of 17. So one by one, that's two, 2 by 1 has 5, so the difference between these two numbers is 3. Now this one is the square root of 5, and this one's the square root of 10, so the difference between these numbers is 5. And then this one, square root of 10 and square root of 17, the difference between these numbers is 7. So the difference is 3, 5, 7. So you'll notice that the difference is always an odd number, and it's the next odd number up. So the odd number 3, the odd number 5, the odd number 7. So that means we can immediately calculate the number we would need for a 5 by 1 angle. Since this is uh, 3, 5, 7, the next one would be 9. So we know this is the square root of 17. We add 9 to 17 to get to 26. So a 5 by 1 angle would be square root of 26 or 26 square root, which is going to be slightly over 5. And then we would divide that by 5 to get the 5 by 1 angle. So anyway, I hope you found this interesting, and I will talk to you all in next week's video.